skin tags, otherwise known as acrocordins, soft fibromas, or fibroepithelial polyps, are harmless growths that can appear anywhere on your skin, but often develop on the neck, eyelids, or underarms. They usually appear on areas with a lot of friction, and in areas where the skin overlaps itself like the neck folds, for example, which is a very common place, and they hang from the surface of the skin of a thin piece of tissue called a stalk. In this video, we look at all the ways they are removed, as well as look at how to remove skin tags yourself. So definitely stay tuned till the end. Also real quick before we get started, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and turn the bell on next to it to stay up to date with new weekly videos. Now I've already made a video on skin tags that has gotten over two and a half million views, which if you're here from that video, say hello in the comments and I'll get back to you. There are estimates that almost 50 to 60% of adults will develop at least one skin tag in their lifetime. The probability of their occurrence actually increases when you're about 40 years old. And I think a good place to start is finding out why they keep occurring. If you figure out why they keep occurring, you can spend less time on removing them. And there are about four reasons. The first is if you have unmanaged diabetes, second, obesity, third, metabolic syndrome, and fourth, if you have a family history of skin tags. Treating these underlying conditions, especially if they're insulin resistant involved, can be a great place to start. As this study showed us that the presence of multiple skin tags was strongly associated with insulin resistance, irrespective of other risk factors. So now that we know what causes them, let's get into how to get rid of them yourself. And because they are harmless, Technically, a skin tag only needs to be removed if it becomes irritated or bleeds, develops on your eyelids and affects your eyesight, or if it feels painful, especially when the pain comes on suddenly. So if these don't apply to you, technically you don't need to remove them. Usually the biggest reason people want to remove them is because they don't like the sight of them. It rubs against the clothes too often, which can be really annoying, or that it gets caught in the jewelry. And it's important to really consider whether to actually remove them or not in the first place, because you may be removing a precancerous or a cancerous mole inadvertently, and you're missing an opportunity to get a correct diagnosis and treatment. But if you've been screened already, and know for sure it isn't, and your intent is to really remove them, there is the wrong way to do it and the right way. The wrong way is to use those freeze away wart removers. The theory is that the cold creates a blister around the skin tag and makes it fall off. But here's the problem. Those home wart products aren't as cold as the liquid nitrogen your dermatologist uses to remove skin growths. What ends up happening is that the skin gets irritated, but non irritated enough for the growth to fall off. And that of course depends on the size too. The larger the skin tags are, the harder they are to remove versus the smaller ones. But the good news is, if you aren't diabetic, the skin tag is similar to the color of your skin, isn't on your eyelid, is soft to the touch, and is between two to six millimeters, then you can make an argument for trying the first FDA cleared skin tag remover that has a precision tip by Dr. Scholes. Now this isn't sponsored, but if your skin tag matches those inclusion criteria, I've left an affiliate link for it down below that you can pick up, which will have the skin tag fall off in about two weeks. This is a lot better than those high percentages of salicylic acid, since the problem with those salicylic acid at home kits is that it can potentially lead to skin damage and cause scarring because it's way too concentrated and can do more damage than good. But if you don't want to spend any money, the best way is to actually tie a thin piece of string around the base of the stock, keep it there for a few days for it to fall off on its own. The idea is that you're physically trying to cut off its blood supply, which then allows it to shrivel up and fall off naturally. And you could use dental floss since it's the right thickness, but keep in mind, this method works best for skin tags that are smaller and are not as innervated with a ton of blood supply. And the third way, if that doesn't work, and this is a do at your own risk way, which I don't recommend actually, and I highly discourage anyone from trying it, is to simply snip it off at the bottom of it using a pair of scissors that have been sterilized by either boiling them or wiping them off with rubbing alcohol thoroughly. Now, the reason why I discourage this is because you don't have the benefit of those numbing creams at the dermatologist's office, so prepare for some pain if you go this route. Again, a method that I don't recommend because the risks of injury, infection, and scarring 
outweigh the benefits. Your dermatologist is better off doing this since they are trained to make these technical incisions and remove skin tags with minimal bleeding, hyperpigmentation, scarring, or injury. So save this method as a last resort with them, especially around the eyelid region, which I highly discourage anyone using a scissor near their eye. Your doctor is less likely to use scissors in this area due to the delicate tissues and the curvature of the orbital bone, so you should not be attempting it either. If the Dr. Scholl's kit doesn't work and the dental floss method doesn't work either, I get that skin tag removal is not covered by insurance because it's considered cosmetic and it can be frustrating to get it covered for medical reasons. Without insurance, it typically costs about 200 bucks and they can remove a handful of tags. So if you're willing to fork over a couple hundred bucks, you can save yourself a ton of headaches. Since they actually have four proven methods to do this, surgical removal, cauterization, laser therapy, and then cryosurgery, all at the professional level. And the good news is, once they are removed, skin tags generally do not grow back after removal. If you develop other skin tags in the same place after removal, you may just be more prone to having them in that area. So a good way to get around this is to eat even a healthier diet than you're used to and perform regular exercise as a way to manage insulin resistance to ultimately prevent them from returning. Also keeping the skin well moisturized and wearing clothing that cuts down on friction like loose fitted clothes can reduce irritation from skin tags, especially the larger ones found in the groin region. Watch this video I made on skin tags if you haven't done so. It goes over some more tips that you might enjoy. And leave me below what your thoughts are on skin tag removal at home. And until then guys, subscribe if you found this video useful and I'll see you on the next one.